I'm Chef Frank. And I'm Rob Tinelli. And today we're making walnut sauce with Corzetti. So I have my friend Rob Tinelli back. We did a video together not that long ago making limoncello from his family recipe. It's gonna be linked right above Rob's head. Um, and we're doing another of his family recipes. Uh, like we said in the last video, his family's from Cavity in Genoa. And uh, this is a, a Genovese sauce for a traditional pasta. So tell us a little about it. Yeah, uh, walnut sauce, um, it's one of our family's traditional recipes that my mom, it's funny, like my, my nonna in Italy, we didn't really get to watch her cook too much because she lived in Italy, we lived in the United States, but she did teach my mom some stuff and my mom passed it on to us. So this is one of two of the main uh, Genovese sauces. You have the traditional pesto, which is very clearly a Genovese sauce. Mm -hmm. Walnut sauce is another one of the Ligurian sauces. And we're using um, traditional pasta stamps from Liguria, uh, basically from Chiavity, right? Right. Uh, and the Corsetti is this pasta that's traditionally served with this. Corsetti actually comes from the old Ligurian, uh, back in the, like, before the 1500s, the coins were called Corsetto. Hmm. So it looks like, the pasta actually looks like a little coin. And yeah. you, when you stamp it, it's got something on both sides, just like a coin would, like a heads and a tails. I feel like cooking is all about not only love, but the hands, right? Oh, so, yeah. you know, you're gonna produce a product that's a little different than mine just because your hands and the way you do it. So I wanna see the way Rob does it. For our walnut sauce is what you're gonna need. Butter, Italian bread with a crust cut off, garlic, walnuts, pecorino romano, parmesan, and extra virgin olive oil. I wanna talk about a couple of ingredients before okay. we start. Now, uh, obviously extra virgin olive oil because right. the sauce isn't cooked. Right, which is important because if you're cooking it, you get that bitterness, you lose all that fruity and nuttiness. It's yeah. like you're basically wasting money. You yeah. might as well use just like a plain, either 100% olive oil or blended oil or something like that if you're gonna cook something with it. You wanna have that, that freshness, that vibrant flavor. Extra virgin is the way to go because it's really, a lot of times you use this to finish something, it's really just like a finishing sauce because yeah. you're not cooking it, it's just a yeah, finish Just heating it with the pasta. Exactly. Right. Remember, when it comes to doing simple things, buying the best ingredients is, is good, right? In Italy, that's what you'll see. They yeah. buy really good ingredients. Very few ingredients, very high quality ingredients. Yep, everything's right. fresh, everything's good quality. Yep. The other one I want to talk about is the walnuts. Now your uh, mom and dad do this a little different than the way we're doing it today. Yeah, they, they've always peeled them. They soak them for a long time and then they peel them. Very tedious, labor-intensive process and yeah. it takes a long time. Now I know my sister-in-law, she makes it without it. She, she leaves the peels on and it comes out excellent. Another ingredient that we're going to put in here to, uh, to kind of work on the consistency of the sauce yeah, it's is a, it's white. A thickener. So we're using the, the inside of the Italian bread. We cut the, right. the outside off. And the last ingredient I want to talk about is cheese. Uh, I have bought Pecorino and Parmigiano. They're from right. Italy, okay? Does it need to be Pecorino and Parmigiano? No, you could also use Grana Padano, any kind of good grating cheese. And don't forget, the ones with the rinds, save the rind. You throw them in a soup, mm -hmm. makes a great flavor, put them in a sauce, yeah. whatever you want to do. The sauce is not difficult to make, no. right? But what are we looking for at the end? We're looking for a consistency, right? Yeah, you want it to be um, like a thick, creamy, almost like a hummus consistency. Okay, cool. We're going to do the walnuts in. If you don't have a food processor, you can use a blender. Or you can do it the old school blender way with, with a mortar yeah, and pestle. I, I got news to you. My grandmother in Italy did not have a blender ever. She had a big wooden cutting board that was very thick and a mezzaluna knife. And the cutting board actually looked like a bowl because she yeah. used that mezzaluna so much she actually wore a groove in it. That was the best pesto you ever had was handmade mezzaluna cut pesto. But that's what she used to use. She would grind everything yeah. up. She'd pound on walnuts with the, with the mallet and just... Chop everything up by hand. That's so if you what, have like a did. mortar and pestle, you can do it with a mortar and pestle? You could do it with a mortar and pestle, cool. sure. Um, actually, that's what she used to do. I love it. I love that. I mean, listen, this is old. We're, we're not that old school. No. We're old, but not that old school. No. How much garlic? I'm going to put two. Uh, I'll do three. three. Three cloves. Three yeah, cloves of garlic three. in. Make it nice and garlic. Um, and throw a little bit more. You get a little more walnuts. We're going to make a little extra. We have our soaked bread. I just soaked it in some water. I'm going to squeeze out what, about half, Rob. Yeah, it's important to squeeze the water out of the bread because if you leave the water in, you're gonna get a much thinner sauce. So there's our soaked bread. Um, and then you wanna do the cheese? Oh, cheese. Cheese will go not too heavy at first because you could always add stuff. You can't take stuff away. A little bit of salt and pepper to start. And then we could just, again, you could adjust the seasoning afterwards. Uh, you want to be careful with salt always when you're using cheese, too. Because, yeah, especially. And we're using pecorino for the actual sauce. We'll use the Parmesan for a garnish later. But 
The pecorino is super salty, so be careful you salt. Olive oil? Right. Now, a lot of times if you're making something in a food processor with olive oil, like a dressing or anything, you want to add the olive oil as it's mixing to emulsify it. Everything's going in one shot right now. I'm gonna give it a scrape. Sure. What are you thinking about that? Do we it's need a chunky. little? Do we need a little liquid? A little or? more liquid. Um, you don't want to add more bread at this point because then. But it's we could probably add our. Chunky. We could use our bread you water. You could use right? a little bit of the bread water. Sure. Cool. Now again, you could use milk for that. It's up to you. All right. Let me see. I think it needs to be a little thinner, you think? It should be a little bit thinner. Okay. Again, we didn't add the butter. The butter will help it thin it out. But yeah. with butter, we'll thin it out a little bit as we mix it with the pasta. So we'll little, do a little bit more, more oil, oil, and then we'll get a little more water. So now it's kind of running. You can see. Yeah, it's much more like that hummus consistency. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much what you're looking for. So yeah, you see how like it's kind of like smooth and creamy. Like hum I think hummus is the, probably the best way you can think about it. We're going to let it puree for a second or two more, you think? Um, yeah, let it go a little bit longer to try to get some more of those chunks out. You you want a little bit of chunk stuff because it gives it a little bit of body to the sauce. Okay, let's give it a taste, see if we have to adjust it at all. What do you think? I like I, I like it. I think we're good to go. Okay, so let's put it aside and roll some pasta. You got it. The sauce is ready to go. Let's roll some pasta. We're gonna roll it out old school By with hand, rolling baby. pins. I gave Rob with a crappy rolling pin. I okay. gave you the crappy peeler for the limoncello video. Now I get the crappy rolling pin. Uh, and the, the pasta dough, I'll put the recipe in the description, but if you ever want to watch the video again, above Rob's head will be a link to our pasta video on how to make this beautiful pasta. We're going to get a lump each. Uh, we have a little bit of bench flour, so I'm just going to go over our bench and we'll roll it out to a nice, even thickness. You have a pasta machine, please use a pasta machine. We're just gluttons for punishment. Frank couldn't find the pasta machine. This is how old Italian lady is doing. Yes. Pasta grannies, you ever watch pasta grannies? Yes, you can't see because they're behind the uh, counter, but my stockings are rolled down just halfway down. <laughs> Just like my grandmother's. He brought a muumuu, -moo, but he, yeah, I, <laughs> I said I, you can't wear it. I had a pink salmon nightgown that I was going to wear with no sleeves on it, but I decided <laughs> not to wear that. Uh, so we're going to roll this out uh, pretty thin. Yeah, you don't need it to be super, super thin. Yeah, I like pasta with a little bit of um, body to it, a yeah. little bit of chews. Okay, I think that I'm good. What's great about the stamp is that it has this kind of cutter edge, and then you have the stamp. So I'm just going to cut my circles. I like to give it a little twist. You can always re-roll the pasta dough, which is great. So if you have the trimmings, you can always re-roll them. I'm gonna leave mine a little bit thicker. So the Tinelli ones will be thicker. That's right, just the, like in real life. The proto ones will be thinner. <laughs> uh, not much thinner. <laughs> right, so uh, get your circles, save this, put it aside, uh, and then I'm gonna stamp my Corsetti with my proto insignia. This is the first time I'm doing this, by the way. Awesome. This is the first time we're using this. So I'm not really sure about the pressure. But oh my it gosh. It comes out pretty easy. Look at that. When we brought these back from Italy, or when I should say when my family brought them back from Italy, and uh, my niece gave my brother his, I think he made like 300 something of them. <laughs> I just did it right away. Because within, within a couple days of them being back, he had a ton of it, and he made, and, and he made walnut sauce. I love it. This is the first time using it. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, you could actually buy these little presses, um, but these were handmade yeah. from somebody who we've known for years and years that lives in the town my father grew up in. He's got a little, he's got a little shop there. Again, his name is Franco Cassoni. You could look him up on Facebook. We're gonna put um, we'll put his shop, a picture of his shop, awesome, up now. We'll also uh, link him there. You know, yeah. so if you're ever in Chiavini, in Genoa. Check him out. Okay. Nothing like good craftsmen. So we this is what we got. We're gonna continue to make enough for our serving today, but there's a P. Where's the T? Show me a T. Right there. Let's hold them next to each other in our hands. Let's hold them in our hands. P and T, flip. And then Rob and Sandra, Tinelli, and Frank and Karen Proto. So I have rapidly boiling water that's been salted. We want it to be sea salty. Um, that'll season our pasta and because this is fresh pasta. It's only going to take about 
three to four minutes. We did it on the thicker side, so we want it to cook all the way through and still have a little bite to it. So get your pasta in there, and we'll go over and put it in the sauce. Pasta's cooked, we have our sauce ready to go, we have our butter. Um, put a little pasta water in there, you think? We'll see if we need it. Okay, give it a shake. One thing that uh, Italians do, will say, they will save their pasta water. So if you look at this pasta water, it has some starch in it, it has salt in it. So we wanna make sure that uh, you don't throw this away. You notice how I use the spider rather than dumping it out into the sink, right? So Rob put a little knob of butter in there, and now we're gonna mix. You wanna put the butter right after you put the pasta. So this way the heat from the pasta will melt the butter. And you can see that the sauce is getting creamier. That's from the butter. That's from the whatever water is on the pasta. We're probably not gonna need any pasta water for this because it's getting nice and creamy. Once you have everything nicely coated, I might've put a little bit too much butter in there, but a little too much butter isn't gonna kill you. Well, no, it could. Eventually, <laughs> not right away, eventually. All right. Okay, we got a bowl ready. Yeah, we got a bowl. Let's let's clear off. Let me clear off the water, and then we'll plate it up and taste. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have a nice little Italian terracotta bowl for this. Oh my gosh. The smell of the garlic coming off of this as it gets hot is just ridiculous. I'm gonna do some Parmigiano. A little mouse got at my cheese. Yeah. In, in between takes, I kind of couldn't help myself. A little bit of black pepper. Always. All right. Time to taste, everyone. Time to taste. Finger guns, time to taste. <laughs> Let's taste. Let's do it. Make sure you get a T. <laughs> I want to pee. <laughs> I want to pee? Or I got to pee. <laughs> I'm having trouble. Poke it. I got it. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's really good. It's so good. One thing I love about this sauce, it's creamy without any cream. The pasta has this great chew to it. Mm -hmm. Like I would have expected it to be a little flimsier, but it's got some like, no. that's the pasta I like. He like hearty, chewy pasta. But that sauce, like you would think that garlic would be like kicking the teeth. But no, because you, you only use a little bit. Yeah, you taste walnut. Yeah. And I love it. I originally put a lot of sauce in the yeah, bowl. Yeah, we have to scoop And Rob's like, yeah, you can't put that much sauce. <laughs> because you'll find in Italian houses, they dress their pasta. They're, they're uh, coating the pasta. They're right. never Like in America, we're used to like, Let's Loaded. put as much yeah. sauce as we can on, but no, this is this is like lightly dressed and it's like perfect. Yeah, this is not this is not like an Olive Garden big bowl of pasta no, keep no. on coming, lots of sauce. This is the way you eat in Italy. This is something that you know. This video is to record this family recipe. Uh, it's true, like beautiful Italian food in the most simplest form, and we got to use we got to use the our stamps from Franco Genoa. Cassoni handmade corsetti. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We have merch down in the description. We also have a PO box down there. I want to thank our Patreon patrons for supporting us. Thank you so much. And that is Walnut Sauce with Homemade Corzetti. I'm Chef Frank. And I'm Rob Tinelli. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.